It's an explicitly stated strategic goal of many of the terrorist organizations to do real damage, albeit indirectly. Some analysts refer to this asymmetric strategy as jujitsu politics. You have a David and Goliath situation. The strategy is to provoke a disproportionate response to get your opponents to use their own might against themselves. Terrorists of all ideologically persuasions have clearly voiced this objective, going back many decades, if not even further. Their aim is to provoke their adversary to show their true colors as enemies of the people, to compromise core values and reveal an inherent disregard for humanity, blurring the moral high ground, and even inciting rebellion among otherwise disinterested parties. This is exactly why terrorists often target civilians, drawing attention, invoking fear, and prompting a fierce show of strength and retaliation. So they can say to potential recruits, see, this conflict is real. They aren't who they say they claim to be. Their values are just a facade. They hate you, they're afraid of us, and we can defeat them if you take action. Terrorist attacks are intended to prompt governments to do things like restrict civil liberties, violate human rights, commit resources and lives to war, and abandon ideals like multiculturalism. They're intended to prompt citizens to allow or even encourage these things to happen, all in the name of security. While terrorist attacks and these detrimental responses are both terrible on their face, they also have second-order effects, like alienating and dividing communities, suppressing or even crippling economic growth, and decreasing resilience to future attacks. In a statement sent to Al Jazeera in 2004, Osama bin Laden said, we are continuing this policy in bleeding America to the point of bankruptcy. It has appeared to some analysts and diplomats that the White House and us are playing as one team towards the economic goals of the United States, even if the intentions differ. The potential effects are to sacrifice the values of equality, indivisibility, freedom, and justice for all. Tom Parker, who's a former policy director for terrorism, counterterrorism, and human rights at Amnesty International USA writes, the genius of terrorism is that it turns citizens into their own worst enemies. So to conclude, as we remember September 11th, as we mourn the victims and honor the heroes of that day, we have an important challenge to also remember to not take the bait. I'm not suggesting this is easy. Navigating the balance between accurately assessing the threat of terrorism, taking it seriously to avoid a failure of imagination, Understanding and adapting to how this threat evolves over time, yet doing so in a way that is measured and advances our interests and our values, is undoubtedly the hardest challenge we all face. Very smart, very well-intended people can debate these issues at length in such a way that everybody gets to be right and everybody gets to be wrong at the same time. But I think that we owe it to the victims to not only remember them, but to approach this challenge with our eyes open, to be kind to each other, and to never forget our shared humanity. Thank you very much.